بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إمام زين العابدين عليه السلام says in a beautiful dua ومن أين لي النجاة ولا تستطاع إلا بك Oh my Lord where do I get salvation for myself when it is not possible except with you بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه الأخيار المنتجبين وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد يقول الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات The uh, Holy Qur'an emphasizes upon the believers believing in previous messages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, chapter 2, verse 285, towards the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, says, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ The Messenger of God believed in whatever was revealed to him, and the believers as well believe in these. كُلٌّ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ Each believes in Allah وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ The angels, his angels وَكُتُبِهِ His books وَرُسُلِهِ His messengers لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ رُسُلِهِ So it is upon every Muslim, upon every believer to believe in all the previous messages, all the previous prophets, all the previous books that were revealed. You can't take some and say, well, this I don't believe in. Huh? لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله. We make no distinction. We do not separate between or any of these messengers. This is what these believers are proclaiming. Okay, so we do not separate these messengers. Okay, we accept that. لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله. But does that mean that all the prophets are at the same rank? Does that mean all of them? We do not distinguish between them, meaning that. There's no one who is, let's say, greater than the other. Is that what this verse is saying? Where in some other places in the Quran, no. It shows that there are prophets who are great. And there are prophets who are greater. How? Allah says, chapter 17, verse 55. وَلَقَدْ فَضَّلْنَا بَعْضَ النَّبِيِّينَ عَلَى بَعْضِ there are some prophets that we have exalted above others. So Allah is saying, there are Nabiyyin, prophets who are fadil, who are righteous, who are good, who are great. And there are those who are greater. Not just prophets, also messengers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says also in the Quran, Tilka rusulu faddalna ba'dahum ala ba'd. These messengers also, we've made some more exalted or greater than the others. Huh? This is what we can see from the Qur'an. Now, of course, a direct question is, okay, but by what merit? By what merit is this prophet greater than that prophet? Or this messenger is greater than that messenger? Also from the Qur'an. So this is what we're trying to do, inshallah. Now, or in this talk, is to talk about the rank of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In the Quran. When Allah says in the Quran, Fasbir kama sabara ulul azmi min al rusul. Allah is saying to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have sabr like whom? Like those who were ulul azm from messengers. Don't have sabr like anyone else. Don't have sabr like the other maybe messengers or the other prophets. Have the sabr like the one that the ulul azm from messengers had. 
the, if you want to call them, let's say the chief messengers, the arch prophets, Ulul Azm. Huh? Allah is saying you have to have patience like these people, like that kind of caliber. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says to the Prophet also, فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكْ وَلَا تَكُنْ كَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ Allah is saying to the Prophet also, be patient, have sabr, have patience. And don't be like the one, the person of the hoot, the fish. Do we know who that one is, by the way? Yunus. Huh? Yunus. Prophet Yunus. He was a prophet. He was a great prophet of God. He was a great prophet of God. Allah is saying, your rank, O Prophet Muhammad, is much higher than that. Don't be like this Prophet. Huh? Imagine. Can you imagine what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comparing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, telling him that your status is much higher. Huh? You, where are you and where is Yunus? You're in a separate league. وَلَا تَكُنْ قَصَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ so it seems sabr is actually one of these qualities by which these messengers are favored upon each other. Yeah, sabr. Azm, we said azm as well, isn't it? Huh? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, says about Adam, وَلَقَدْ عَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمَ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَلَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُ عَزْمًا huh? We have وَلَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُ عَزْمًا عَفْوًا وَلَقَدْ عَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ آدَمَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَلَمْ نَجِدْ لَهُ عَزْمًا And we have had a covenant with Adam before, but we did not find in him or with him determination or resolve. عَزْم So it seems that, so this is of course a translation of that verse, it seems that there was something that was not found in Adam, and therefore he was not of the عَزْم prophets. So it seems that clearly that the Qur'an is distinguishing those who are ulul azmi min al rusul, fasbir kama sabra ulul azmi min al rusul, have patience like those ulul azm of messengers had, huh? And there are others. Who are the ulul azm messengers, as we understand from our traditions? Can anyone tell me, Mahdi? Do you know who the ulul azm messengers are? The five ulul azm. That's a hint. Does anyone know who the five ulul azm messengers are? Ali, do you know um, in the corner? Yes, you. <laughs> yep. Yasmin, putting you on the spot. No, nope. anyone? I'll put older people on the spot now. <laughs> Should I put Nuh on the spot? No, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Ahsan, Nuh? Moses? Ibrahim before Moses? Jesus, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Mahdi, who are they? Who are they? Can you, can you say one of them? Just whisper it, I can see you with your lips. Muhammad is one of them, that's the easiest man. Come on, give me a challenge. Anyone else? Ali there. Name one of these five prophets we just named literally 10 seconds ago. Come on. Huh? What? Isa? Did you say Isa? No. What did you say? Jesus. Yes. Who is Isa, by the way? Yeah, that's the same person, inshallah. Yes? Ahsan. Anyone else? The baby right there. Is that too young? <laughs> Maybe too young. Yes? So Nuh, Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is the common factor, another common factor between these five, apart from them being ulul azm? Huh? Is that what? What did they bring? Leadership. Huh? Leadership. leadership. They were leaders, obviously. Okay, but there were other prophets and messengers who were also leaders. In what? Leadership in what? Yeah, Rusul. Rusul in what? In the green book. book. Dawood, did he not have a book? Dawood, no? He did have Zabur, as far as I remember. So it's the only book that they brought. No, they brought also a sharia. Huh? They brought a kind of a legislation, a kind of law. Let me read this narration for you from Imam al-Rida It is narrated that he said, azm. Why were they called ulul azm, these five? Because they were the people of azaim and shara'ah. So they had a sharia. Huh? 
وذلك أن كل نبي بعد نوح. So every prophet after Nuh followed Nuh in his Sharia. Every prophet between Nuh and Ibrahim followed Nuh as a Sharia. So Nuh was the boss of his Sharia. Then Ibrahim alayhi salam came and then he brought another Sharia. And everyone between Ibrahim and Musa, they followed the Sharia of Ibrahim. And until Musa. Everyone after Musa, until Isa, followed the Sharia of Musa. And after everyone after Isa followed the Sharia of Isa and until the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Imam Rida continues, he says, فَهَؤُلَاءِ الْخَمْسَ أُلُوا الْعَزْمُ وَهُمْ أَفْضَلُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ These five are أُلُوا الْعَزْمُ and they are the best prophets or the best of the prophets. And the final Sharia is the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Of course, who is the best? Yasmin, you have to participate today. Who is the best of these five? Who, which one? Because there are five Rasuls. Ahsanti, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's no doubt, there's no dispute that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is the greatest amongst these five. Yeah? But of course, if we want to know or understand the rank of the Holy Prophet وسلم, why do we believe he's actually the best amongst all? It is really difficult for us to come up with answers on why we think the Prophet has that great value, great status. Actually, if you remember, there's this hadith attributed to the Prophet where he says to Imam Ali, Ya Ali, ma arafani illa Allah wa ant. O oh, Ali, no one has known me truly except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you. Huh? So if we want to know the Prophet, it is really the best way to know him is by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this Prophet? What is his status? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we go to the Quran. It reminds me of a ziyara as well that is recited towards Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salam. There is a narration. Where there is a ziyara, we say, Assalamu alayka, salama man arafaka bima arafaka bihillah. Peace be upon you by the peace or salutations of those who know you by the way that God made you known. Huh? So we know some people by the way that God makes them known. I'll mention a few things about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the Prophet in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ And my mercy enveloped everything. Everything. أَيْنَمَا تُوَلُّوا فَثَمَّ وَجْهُ اللَّهِ Wherever you turn, you're turning to God. His mercy enveloped everything. Allah is the merciful. Allah is Ar-Rahman. Allah is Ar-Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is introducing himself in the Quran multiple times with these two names specifically. قُلِ ادْعُوا اللَّهَ أَوِ ادْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ Allah could have introduced himself multiple times using another name. But no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I am merciful. Wherever you turn, my mercy is there. Allah is the merciful. Mercy is an attribute of God. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about his prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the Quran? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ we have never, we have not sent you, O Muhammad, but mercy to the mankind. Muhammad is not someone who has an attribute of mercy. He, in all his existence, is mercy. What is the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving this prophet? That he's being labeled with an attribute of God. Where do you see that in the Quran for anyone else? Another one. Allah says, Ya ayyuha nasu antumul fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu huwa al ghaniyu al hamid. O people, you are the, those who are needy. You are the needy to God. And Allah is needless. Allah is rich. Allah is enricher. In another verse, it says, Wama naqamu illa an aghnahum allahu wa rasuluhu min fadlih. It says that Allah and His Messenger enrich people from his bounties. Huh. Allah wa Rasuluhu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is combining the Prophet with the divine name, saying that they are enriching. 
Allah is ghani, Muhammad yughni. What is this? Where do you see this? For anyone else in the Quran. Inna Allah bin nasi la ra'ufun rahim. Allah says in the Quran. Indeed, Allah is kind and merciful to the people. Allah is kind and merciful. In another place, what does Allah say about the Prophet? Bil mu'minina ra'ufun rahim. The exact same attributes Allah is describing his Prophet with. What is this? What level is this? Let me mention this and elaborate a bit more on it. You know in the Quran, the story of the creation of this creation that is called Adam. It is mentioned in the Quran multiple times. Multiple times. Huh? It is talking about the origin of our existence. Let me recite these verses, read them in English, and elaborate on them a bit. Maybe with yourselves as well, with your help. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Surah Al-Baqarah Chapter 2 Verses 31 to 33 وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِي بِأَسْمَاءِ هَأُولَاءِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ قَالُوا سُبْحَانَكَ لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِلَّا مَا عَلَّمْتَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ قال يا آدم أنبئهم بأسمائهم فلما أنبأهم بأسمائهم قال ألم أقل لكم إني أعلم غيب السماوات والأرض وأعلم ما تبدون وما كنتم تكتمون English And he taught Adam the names All of them Then he presented them to the angels and said Tell me the names of these if what you say is true because before that, the angels were kind of objecting to God's creation of this creation. If you remember from other <laughs> verses. They replied, glory be to you, O God, subhanak. We have no knowledge except what you have taught us. You are truly all-knowing and all-wise. Allah said, O Adam, inform them of their names. The names that Allah taught. Then when Adam did... Allah said, did I not tell you that I know the secrets of the heavens and the earth and that I know what you reveal and what you conceal? Okay. What do we learn from this story? First, how was Adam taught? By whom was Adam taught? Who taught Adam? Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was there any means, any channel between Allah and Adam in teaching? وَعَلَّمَ Adam. Immediately God says, and he taught Adam. Adam received knowledge from God directly without any means. Not like you and I now, we sit and we gain knowledge. Huh? We listen, we have to spend time listening, reading. Yes? Seems that's a special type of knowledge, right? That's one. Who informed the angels? Was it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who informed the angels directly? Although he could. But who informed the angels of these names of all things? Huh? Adam. 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 After what? After he got taught by God. So we see Allah taught Adam. And now Adam was in a position to inform the angels. Huh? Of course... There are discussions here as in, okay, what is this knowledge? وَعَلَّمَ Adam, And he taught Adam. And he gave Adam knowledge. What is this knowledge? Is this like the knowledge that you and I, again, we sit and learn? Or is this something like the knowledge that Allah says in the Quran, if you remember? قَالَ الَّذِي عِنْدَهُ عِلْمٌ مِّنَ الْكِتَابِ If you remember in the Quran, there's a story, a very beautiful um, story that Allah presents about Sulaiman, the Prophet Sulaiman, when he would be talking to his men and he would say, who can bring me the throne of this Queen of Sheba. One would say, I'll bring it to you before you even stand up. I have that power. And then Allah says, قَالَ الَّذِي عِنْدَهُ عِلْمٌ مِّنَ الْكِتَابِ أَنَا آتِيكَ بِهِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَرْتَدَّ إِلَيْكَ طَرْفُ The one, then the one who has some knowledge of the book said, I will bring it to you before you even blink. This person had a knowledge, some knowledge of the book, yet he was able to what? Control things. Bring a throne in a blink of an eye. Huh? He had knowledge of the book. In another place in the Quran, Allah says, قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ 
say that it is sufficient as a witness Allah between you and I and the one who has knowledge of the book. Some narrations say that the one who has knowledge of the book is Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. If you have some knowledge of the book, you're able to do like that man. If you have all knowledge of the book, imagine what this person would be. That's the discussion. Another discussion is, what are these names? So, Allama Adam, he taught Adam, but he taught him names. What are these names? Huh? Some say these are, you know, all knowledge, knowledge of all things. Some say these are actually the divine names. If you see where Allah uses in the Quran the word Asma, if you remember, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا And to God belong the beautiful names, the greatest names, so invoke him by them. قُلْ اِدْعُوا اللَّهَ أَوْ اِدْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ أَيَّمَّا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Say, invoke Allah or invoke the Rahman, whoever, whatever you invoke, to him belong the beautiful names. Yeah. Some say that the names are the names of God. This is... Knowledge of the divine. Another point that is also mentioned here is that, okay, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that he taught Adam, but he didn't say that Adam taught the angels. Huh? That's one of the th things that distinguish also angels and Adam. It seems that angels do not have the capacity to learn or to have this knowledge. So they can only be informed. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have Maybe taught them. And they said, you know, we can't learn whatever or accept what you let us learn. La ilma lana illa ma huh? These are side discussions. Anyway, this Adam that Allah is talking about in the Quran, which Adam is this? This is a question that is posed. Is this the same Adam that Allah is talking about somewhere else in the Quran where he says we did not find in him determination or hazm? Or is this a different Adam? I'm going to suggest this as some scholars suggested, actually, that it seems that the Quran is talking about two Adams here. One Adam is the Adam that we hear about, the prophet Adam, or some who say the Adam who was the father of um, what, let's say, modern humans are, say. And this is the physical Adam, let me say. The Adam of this world, Adam of dunya, the Adam of mulk. But it seems that this Adam that Allah has created and has taught and has asked him to inform the angels and had asked the angels to bow to him, actually, to prostrate to him. It seems that this is another Adam, what is called Adam al-Malakut, Adam of the real world, the transcendent world, the unseen world. So that Adam is an Adam that took knowledge directly from God, is the Adam that was able to teach the angels, and is the one that who, is the one who deserved that the angels do what? Sujood to him. Of course, this is not the sujood of ibadah or fiqhi sujood that we do. Hmm? This is the sujood of subservience. This is the sujood of dignifying that creation. Do you know what it means, angels, to prostrate, by the way, to this creation? Do we know the rank of angels? Before now, we talk about the rank of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do we know the rank of the angels? Huh? Let me give you a flavor of what this is. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says or describes the angels in the Quran, he says, بَلْ عِبَادٌ مكرمون. These are dignified servants. Dignified. These creations are of high status. Or when Allah says, for example, فَالْمُدَبِّرَاتِ amra, Allah is swearing by these angels, the great of great status. He's saying that these are the managers by the command of God. They are the managers of this world. Allah says, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala receives the souls when they die. But also he says, قُلْ يَتَوَفَّاكُمْ مَلَكُ الْمَوْتِ الَّذِي وُكِّلَ بِكُمْ Say that the one who grasps and takes your souls is the angel of death that was given the responsibility of doing this. They are managers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala manages this world, yes, but through these angels. The big boss of angels, uh, Jabra'il. Jabra'il. Because Allah says, فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ 
Who prostrated to this Adam? Was there any exception? Angels, all of them, Ajma'un, all of them, including their boss, Jibra'il. Do you know Jibra'il? Do you know the level of Jibra'il? Allah says, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ It is indeed a speech from a messenger that is honored, Jibra'il. ذِي قُوَّةٍ عِنْدَ ذِي الْعَرْشِ مَكِينٍ Someone, Jibra'il, is with a strength by the throne of the world, of, or in, at the throne, at the kingdom of the Lord. Makin, muta'in thamma, ameen. He is obeyed. He's a boss, yes, he's obeyed by the angels. Jibra'il does sujood to this creation. Jibra'il and all the angels do sujood to this creation. What is this? Who is this creation? So, if the whole world is under the management of these creation of angels, and these angels prostrate to Adam, meaning that they are under his management, that glorious creation, it means that this is an exceptional creation, this Adam. is an exceptional creation. On the night of ascension of the Prophet wasallam, it is narrated that, Imam Baqir says, لَمَّا أُسْرِيَ بِهِ when the Prophet was ascended, he reached a stage that is called Sidratul Muntaha, a very high spiritual stage. Jibra'il would let the Prophet, he would step back and let the Prophet move forward, and the Prophet would ask him, Jibra'il, my brother, at this station you will leave me now? Jibra'il would tell him, O oh Rasulullah, move. By Allah, you have reached a stage and a station that no one ever before you has reached. Even Jibra'il is not licensed, is not able actually to move forward and to ascend. And the Prophet was able to ascend. Now we understand maybe what this creation is, Adam, that Allah is talking about in the Quran. This is the station of that creation. And maybe if we understand this, we understand also in Surah Al-Qadr. What do we say in Surah Al-Qadr? Rayhan, Tanazzalul. Malaikatu warruhu fiha. Do you remember? Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Wama adraka ma laylatul qadr. Ahsan. Laylatul qadri. Continue. Excellent. Tanazzalul malaikatu warruhu fiha. The angels descend on the night of qadr. Now we know who they descend onto or unto. We can understand that when we read narrations that it is the Ahlul Bayt, it is the Prophet. Huh? It is the Ahlul Bayt where the angels actually descend. Another discussion. In Kafi, a narration on Jabir bin Abdullah, he said, I asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. قلت لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أول شيء خلق الله تعالى ما هو جابر the companion of the prophet is asking him the first creation that Allah created what was it what is it you know what the prophet answered نور نبيك يا جابر the light of your prophet O جابر this was the first thing that Allah created what does the prophet continue to say ثم خلق منه كل خير from that light Allah created every good, the light of that Prophet. Of course, we're not talking here about the dimension of the Prophet who was born from this mother, from this father, at that time, in that space, in these circumstances. No, we're talking about another reality now. Nuru Nabiyikum, the light of the Prophet. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ, his reality was the first thing that was created. But yes, in this world, it was the last messenger that was sent. Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam says, attributed to him, Ala inni abdullahi wa akhu rasulih. I am indeed the servant of God and the brother of his messenger. Akhu means sort of equal, not necessarily brother. Qad saddaqtuhu wa adamu bayna ruhi wal jasad. I believed in him, I endorsed him, I believed in him, and Adam was not yet created. Or when there is a narration attributed to Ahlul Bayt that they said, Sabbahna fasabbahat al malaika. We glorified God. And then the angels glorified God. 
the Prophet also, it is attributed that he said, Ana awalukum khalqan wa akhirukum ba'than. He's confirming it. I am the first who was created, but yes, the last who was sent as a messenger from God. How did the Prophet wasallam then reach that stage? Is it because Allah wanted? لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. Is it because Allah subhanahu wa taala shall never be questioned? He decides. Of course, he does, and no one has any authority over him to ask him or question him. He questions actually. But is it that that he chose that the Prophet reached that stage, or is it that by the fact that Allah says, for example, وهو أعلم بالشاكرين. Allah knows more. Allah is more knowledgeable, most knowledgeable about those who are thankful. Or is it that Allah says, Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalatah? There is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about where his message goes, through what, through whom. Allah says in the Quran in chapter 7, verse 172, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمِ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ دُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ Let me read the English in the interest of time. And remember when your Lord brought forth from the loins of the children of Adam, their descendants, and had them testify regarding themselves. Allah asked, am I not your Lord? They replied, yes, you are, we testify. In some world, it seems that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to us all. Yes, you are, we testify. And he cautioned now you have no right to say on judgment day, we were not aware of this. Some suggest this verse to say that this is indicating what the fitrah, that we are, we have this initial disposition that we long for God. If you leave someone alone, huh? yes, let's say Tarzan in the jungle, huh? not influenced by any distractions, any corruption, huh? we have a tendency to want to long for God. We have a tendency to understand or to reach out to God. Whether we call it God or Allah or anything, that's, a, that's a, another discussion. But there is something in us that acknowledges a truth. Some suggest that this verse is it. This is Allah instilling in each one of us, planting in every one of us a seed, a compass that points to God. But of course, it is what we do when we grow up. It is the distractions that we get engaged in that divert us, that distract us. A narration from Imam Ali alayhi salam on Al-Asbaq bin Nubata. He said that someone came to Amirul Mu'mineen and asked him, O oh, Amirul Mu'mineen, O oh, Ali, did Allah speak to anyone before Musa? Imam Ali replies, he says, yes, he spoke to everyone. The good and the bad, the good and the evil. And that person, he could not take it easily, to be honest. It was a very heavy answer on him. And he would ask, فَكَيْفَ ذَلِكَ كَيْفَ كَانَ ذَلِكَ يَا أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Imam Ali السلام, would tell him, do you not read the Qur'an? And he would mention this verse. And he says, Imam continues, and he says, فَأَقَرُّ لَهُ بِالطَّاعَةَ وَالْرُبُوبِيَةَ And people testified and agreed, so testified to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his lordship. وَمَيَّزَ الرُّسُلَ وَالْأَنْبِيَاءَ وَالْأَوْصِيَاءَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala distinguished the messengers and the prophets and the successors of the prophets. It seems that those, they answered the first before others. You know when Allah asked these creation, these people, am I not your Lord? And they said yes. Someone said yes before the other. Those who said yes first were those, the elite people, were the elite how do we see pointers to these in the Quran? If I want to claim now that the first one to acknowledge and to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to say bala was the light of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. What evidence do I have? Remember in the Quran Allah talks about Nuh. Salamun ala Nuhin fil alameen. Nuh is a great prophet, huh? a great prophet. He was sent salutations by God in a way that no one was sent. Yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says, وَأُمِرْتُ Quoting Nuh. وَأُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ And I was commanded to be of the submitters. He was one of the submitters. 
or Ibrahim, wa umirtu an uslima li rabbil alameen. And I was commanded to submit to the Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes to the Prophet, Allah says to the Prophet, Qul innani hadani rabbi. Until the verse says, wa kathalika umirtu wa ana awwalul muslimin. And I was commanded and I am the first to submit. The Prophet came thousands of years after the previous Prophets. So with this by timeline, he wasn't the first one who was a Muslim, was he? Ibrahim was a Muslim before him, was a submitter before him. So what is this verse saying? That Prophet, oh Prophet say, I am the first of those who submit. I am the first of those who were submitting. These are some of the stations of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah that he may help us appreciate and learn more and know about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa For indeed, we cannot love one whom we do not know. And we cannot take lead and be and have uswa, the Prophet, if we do not appreciate his status. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Salawat. Oh.